Hi, ever wanted a really small and cheap projector that you can fit in your pocket? Hang around and I'll show you how to make one. And like all my project videos, give you some tech explanations along the way. Let's get into it. If you saw one of my previous mailbag videos, you would have seen me unbox a DLP2000 evaluation module from Texas Instruments. This uses the DLP2000 Digital Micro Mirror Device, which does pretty much what the acronym says. Thousands of tiny mirrors are placed on the surface of a silicon wafer and can be adjusted from plus 10 to minus 12 degrees, allowing light to be fully reflected out through the lens or directed into a heatsink. Brightness levels are controlled by pulse width modulating the state of the mirror between on and off. These mirrors can be moved extremely fast, which is important because of the way colour is produced. The DMD will continuously alternate a red, green and blue colour filter in front of the light source, and the mirrors will be moved to adjust the intensity of each colour, either on, off or somewhere in between, using PWM. So there are of course pros and cons with this method. One of the pros is that it's a relatively cheap way of making a projector, cheaper than traditional LCD methods. And since there's no light loss due to polarisation filters as you find in LCD projectors, you can get away with a much smaller light source. The downside is that the resolution isn't scalable. That is, the higher the resolution, the faster the colour filters have to change to be able to maintain an adequate video refresh rate. The faster the colour filters change, the less time that is available for each mirror to adjust brightness levels, therefore reducing colour depth. However, for the price, it does a pretty decent job. The evaluation board will set you back around 99 US dollars, but unfortunately is only designed for the BeagleBone. You can use other SBCs such as a Raspberry Pi, but you'll have to resort to a big old mess of wires. First I'll show you how to connect up a Raspberry Pi to the DLP2000, then I'll give you a much better option. Wiring it all up is fairly straightforward. Follow the diagram on my website and you'll end up with this. Once you have it in this state, apply power to the Pi, which will also power the DLP2000. I'm assuming you have a running Pi already. If you don't, then check out my Pi setup videos. Once booted, log into your Pi and you'll need to edit two files. The first is the bootconfig.txt file. What this does is to change the I2C interface to other pins so that they don't clash with the LCD GPIOs, which are configured using the DPI18 device tree overlay. The rest of the lines in this file are specific to this particular display. Next you need to edit etc rc.local and add these lines. This will configure the DLP2000 to use the GPIO lines for the display instead of the default splash screen. If you haven't already enabled ITC on your Pi, you can run Raspberry config to do this. Then reboot the Pi and you're done. Easy. Uh, except for the big old mess of wires. Fortunately, JLC PCB Man came to the rescue and you can completely ditch this rat's nest of wires by picking up a Raspberry Pi 0W adapter board on Tindy. Check the description below and on my website for links. Revision 1 of this Pi projector is a plain header to header adapter, so nothing fancy at this stage. In a later revision I'll be adding LiPo battery support and other features depending on demand. The Pi 0W is mounted onto the PCB by directly soldering or by header. I've added two large ground planes to make the display output rock solid, but also provided a void so that the Wi-Fi signal isn't attenuated. The Pi 0W can be mounted either underneath the PCB or on top, and the PCB can be mounted either on top of the projector or underneath. Whichever way you mount it, just make sure the micro USB power connector is lined up with a DC jack on the projector. However, the smallest footprint will be this configuration. When you mount it this way, you'll need two 40 by 2 female headers, which need to be soldered up, and also a 13 by 2 male header, which is a fairly standard Pi header. Solder this up to the Pi projector board. Next, grab your Pi and place it face down on the PCB. The plastic spacer on the header will provide enough space so the Pi will lie parallel to the PCB. Then solder this up. 
To keep the board flat, you can solder one pin while holding the Pi, then solder up the rest of the pins. Then add the DLP2000. Then there's one more thing to do. Unfortunately, the TI guys didn't bother to connect up the 5 volt power lines on their board and left it empty. So I provided this connection on my PCB so that a simple jumper will do the job. If you don't like the jumper, you could always solder this up on the DLP2000 PCB. Next, add power. You can either use the DC jack or micro USB port for this. And there you have it, a decent little portable display. Visible even under my studio lights, but better in a darkened room. If you want to play a video, then you can use the Pi's optimized video player for this. And for sound, you can use a Bluetooth receiver. In a later revision of my PCB, I'm thinking of also adding a simple audio amplifier to power some small speakers. If you really do want to mount the PCB on top of the projector, with the Pi Zero W underneath the PCB, make sure to get extra long male header pins. The ones I had on hand were just a little short for this, unfortunately. If you can't find any, then you can always treat the Raspberry Pi as a module and directly solder to the PCB. This method requires a bit of skill, but it's workable. First, add some insulation tape to the bottom of the PCB. It's not really required, but more of a just-in-case. Then line up the pins as best you can. You can use a header temporarily for this. Then solder the first point down. It's important to make sure that both PCBs are as close as possible to each other. Any gaps and you won't have a proper solder joint. Then go along and solder the rest of the vias. Turn it over and solder on the other side to make sure there's a proper solder joint. It's not really a recommended way of doing it, but just another option. Okay, so what sort of power pack would you use to power this thing? I attached it to my desk power supply with an inline power monitor to see what current draw there was. When booting up and sitting idle, it drew a maximum of 673 milliamps with an average of 373 milliamps. Pretty decent considering the specs both TI and Raspberry Pi suggest for their power packs. On the other hand, while playing a video, there was a maximum of 609 milliamps with an average of around 470 milliamps. So the next revision, I'll be definitely adding in LiPo power. And then JLC PCB man meets his arch nemesis down at the docks. Captain Discharge. What? Captain Discharge? Yeah, he stores energy and releases it. It's called CAP for short. Okay, I guess that sounds... CAP right. says, there's not enough energy in this town for both of us. This is starting to sound like a western. Yeah. Then J-Man looks at him. CAP looks back. J-Man. CAP. J-Man. CAP. Let me guess. Then CAP fires off a bolt of electricity. Ha 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 ha. But J-Man is just standing there. CAP realises. J-Man says, I have a substantial ground plan on several layers. This is actually starting to sound really good. So what happens next? Uh, next, well, uh... So that's about it for a pretty easy pocket projector. Don't forget you can pick up this adapter board from Tindy. I only have a handful there, but when I run out, I'll run another batch. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you get a kick out of it. And you can support me even further by joining the bunch of really cool patrons I have over at Patreon. Thanks for watching and see you next week. There's not enough energy in the town for both of us. <laughs> okay, it's a medical laughter. <laughs> I have a substantial ground plane on several layers. <laughs> several layers. Substantial ground plane on several layers. <laughs> <laughs>